Hello, Namaste. Welcome to Dave's Hammer Show. This is the flagship weekly television show of Indigenous Television. Indigenous Television is Nepal's, in fact, South Asia's first Indigenous community television. Through this weekly television show, I try to bring the voices of Indigenous peoples from across the globe and try to connect their voices, successes and struggles with one another. In this weekly television show, I sometimes conduct face-to-face -face interview and sometimes I conduct online video conferences. Today, uh, like previous week, I am going to conduct video conferences with uh, Mrs. Uh, Maru Chavez. Uh, she comes from Mexico. She uh, worked, previously she worked with the World Association of Community Radio Broadcasters, in short, known as AMARC, Mexico, where she was involved in uh, designing a feminist approach on the radio communication strategy, uh, and currently she is uh, associated with the Boston-based INGO, known as Cultural Survival, as Indigenous Rights a Radio Program Manager. Basically, when we talk about the community radios or community medias, uh, various issues are raised in regards to women. Basically, uh, the challenges in relation to uh, the lack of participation of women in the media and indigenous women's participations and their access to the media, which is uh, uh, far behind. And it is, not it is not only in Nepal, but elsewhere. So I'm going to talk about the same issues with Maru Chavez. Mrs. Maru, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. And uh, could you first uh, introduce yourself and about your community? Uh, my name is Maru Chavez Fonseca. I'm from Mexico, uh, particularly from a community called Caleria in the state of Veracruz. You told me in background about your work that uh, you have designed feminist approach a radio communication strategy in Mexico. Uh, what kind of uh, approaches is this? Could you tell us uh, about this unique strategy? We started to work with a feminist organization called Salud Integral para la Mujer many years ago in the area organization didn't have a radio station the, the the leaders of the organization thought that um, go to radio stations go to media with the feminist uh, agenda uh, will be uh, very important for the the incidents in the public policy for women. So they started to use radio as a, as a platform to put in front of the audience the um, feminist agenda, the, the women's uh, human rights uh, in front of the agenda. And that is very important because so the, the, the people in general knew about this agenda. Uh, then my, my work started there in Salud Integral para la Mujer, the, the short name is CIPAM, and uh, I started to work in scripts and production and, and uh, being speaker for the radio program. I think that we need to have a very clear objective. We in general, and our objective is is to 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 in front the audience uh, to disseminate these issues through the media. But I think that we, we need. To, to um, uh, put uh, because the, the the language is the 
main tool to, to do media. So we need to use uh, non-sexist languages. Uh, to, we need to use uh, some uh, perspective uh, in, uh, to, 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 to explain the people that we need um, that's women women's issues are important for instance like in the cases of uh, violence or feminist uh, i mean the feminicide so uh we need to change the way we are talking about some issues uh, with another perspective and uh, for instance if we do a program about um, um, the the feminists in the north of the country we need to reach this data through uh, some women working there with the feminists um, and or for instance, when we uh, have some news about AIDS, for instance, before we you, we listened for, uh, from the radio or the TV that these people were like sidosos in Spanish, that was a very um, discriminating term so we need to change the languages the language we need to to, uh, to approach the issues in other ways that we don't need to be discriminate uh, discriminating people so um, yes that that's the way we need to create a new way to approach the, the issues the women's issues so you told me that you have worked as an uh, indigenous women journalist, rights activist, mainly to help increase their access to media, mostly in Latin America. Uh, it is one of the major challenges that indigenous women uh, journalists are facing across the world. If you have to analyze indigenous women's access to media, what is your view in this regard? Well, I think that we have a long way to go with the, these issues. Um, in America, I don't know many indigenous women participating in media, not in commercial or public or community media in general. So I think that we need to work hard to to give the possibilities to open the possibilities to participate in media for indigenous women uh, i know that there are well more or less 30 percent of women participating in community media uh, in latin america but i i have to say that not all community media in Latin America are indigenous media. Uh, there is uh, differences with uh, between community and indigenous, particularly in Mexico. In the law, we have this difference very clear. Uh, we speak about community media as uh, uh, media which is in hands of the the people in but in general like uh, they can be people organized people in big cities or uh, we can say that there is a community radio in hands of uh, peasants or farmers or or etc uh, different groups of the society, like the organized society, that is community media. But indigenous media is uh, that media that are in hands of 
indigenous peoples, indigenous communities, and they are organized uh, in some legal structure that we have in Mexico that is called usos y costumbres. It's like uses and customs uh, according to the historical, uh, historical and traditional way of organi organization of the community. So uh, um, they can go and ask for a license to run a media in their community and uh, because of their uso, usos y costumbres, they will receive a license. They can speak uh, uh, indigenous languages uh, through this media and they organize uh, the, the, the media according to their um, uses so uh, we we have when we speak about community media we don't necessarily speak about indigenous media this is necessary to say because there is some um, it's a little bit confused so if we want to know how many women are participating in indigenous media Media, we need to go to this indigenous media and not necessarily to go to the community media. Because in the community media, yes, we have a little bit more women participating, but because when we are uh, including, uh, proof, I mean, uh, journalists, women journalists that were to school or where to went to the university uh, but not necessarily uh, this is happening with indigenous media and for me it's very important to clarify this because then we need to put our eyes our, <laughs> to focus on the participation of uh, indigenous women in media I want to further ask you, why do you think, uh, why is it important to indigenous community uh, own their own media? The opinion is that they need to have the media in their hands because every, everyone, every person have the right to freedom of, of expression. So, um, I think that they have the right. I mean, the indigenous people have the right to to have their own media just because it's a right. And uh, if uh, if people is demanding to have the uh, the media in their hand, um, the state should guarantee that this will happen. Uh, just because it's a right, I think so. But for instance, in Mexico, since 1994, when the Zapatists arise as movement, as a movement in Mexico, we uh, they were demanding to have their own media. So, and secondly, I think that different groups. In, in, in the society in Mexico, for instance, uh, have the right to, to have this uh, the media because uh, it's, it's a way of reinforce the identity. Uh, for instance, the um, we have the big mainstream media in Mexico City and they are showing the way of, uh, the way that uh, urban people saw the life. Or for instance, they are reinforcing stereotypes like women in a way of being, for instance, uh, women, working uh, home and uh, some stereotypes so uh, we need even when indigenous people are show it in mainstream media they are show it in a way that are 
like uh, the object of my point of view as urban women, yes? Um, so sometimes indigenous people in mainstream media are ridiculized and uh, discriminated. So we need to change that. But if we don't, if we cannot change that in the mainstream media because mainstream media are private and uh, they are responding to a commercial interest, so we need to push the other way in other uh, media, in other kind of media. So I think that the these are two reasons because indigenous people need to have the media on their hand. What do you think the role of a media to preserve, promote and protect the diverse language, culture and rituals of indigenous peoples? I think, uh, yes, uh, I mean, media is uh, spreading uh, ideas, spreading uh, languages, spreading ways of uh, behaviors. So um, I think that media are a tool to spread languages. Um, I think it's not the only tool, of course, but this one of the tools that people, peoples uh, have on their hand to preserve languages. It's your language with uh, proud, proud of being part of a community. If you, your language is, is kind of um, a, a characteristic of a group of of a person so we we can spread more and more the 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 necessity of using that language um or just to reinforce that this language is a beautiful kind of uh, tool to communicate with other people so i think that to, to rescue, rescue uh, languages through media is a very important tool to spread the language and to reinforce the use of that language. So you also have been uh, involved in AMARC Mexico. What is it doing to increase women's access to media? AMARC uh, is the most important uh, community and indigenous media uh, uh, network uh, from the civil society in Mexico. And uh, the, the, this network did a very good work during the telecommunications reform together with another organizations, of course, because nobody can work alone. But uh, I think I did uh, very good uh, work during the reform and during the discussion of the new federal law for telecommunication and uh, um, broadcasting. Uh, so uh, the, AMARC is doing a good uh, work in Mexico, but it has uh, challenges as to find uh, the diversity on the ways that the the radio can uh, be sustainably. So I think that the uh, the challenge is to 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 send strength the radio stations in many ways, like a, a quality for production to be um, strong uh, economically and uh, that if you are strong economically you have the half of the problem solved uh, about production yes because then you you can go and uh, um, 
to, to pay for education or, for, or to pay for some capacity building for the, the, the team of people uh, who is working inside the radio station. So I think that the, the, the big, big challenge is to be strong economically, to uh, invest in capacity building, to invest in uh, technologies, and uh, to, to invest in, in the, the, the work that the network is doing with the officials. So, uh, yes, uh, I, I think that this is the challenge for America in Mexico. You have been working in media for many years. Uh, we see in many countries, women are not willing to get involved in. What is your view? What is the main challenge for women for being able to involve uh, in the media? Uh, 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 if you mean community media, I think that the main uh, uh, reason that women are not involved, involved is because of the lack of money. <laughs> I mean, uh, in community media here in Mexico, we have um, women who who are uh, married generally, so they have uh, children to to care of. Uh, they have a, a house or a husband to care of, and they need to bring some money home. So, um, in one way, they don't have too much time to, to, to participate in the community uh, radio station, for instance, or they they need to to go out of. Uh, to go out to the street uh, uh, to work for money, not to work voluntary. So I think that the, uh, these are the two main problems for participation of women in community, in, yes, in community radio stations mainly. But in general, in media, in Mexico, we have many women working. But yes, they are working for um, small money in commercial, for instance, or in public media. So I think that our main problem in Mexico is for uh, women participating in community media. What is your personal experience? What uh, made you to engage continuously with media, despite such uh, challenges that you just shared? Yes, but I, well, mm, how <laughs> This is an interesting question. I think that, uh, well, I, I always has a salary. Uh, well, it, it wasn't a big salary, but uh, at least a small salary uh, I always has. And um, my daughter, I live with my daughter because I am a single mother, so I need to, uh, well, yes, to, to, to take care of my daughter uh, uh, in, many, in many sense. But I, I don't know, I always could be nice, I always could to, to manage the money to be enough for us both. And I had the help of my mother that uh, it has been very, 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 very important for me because she was always helping to take care of my daughter or even to, to help him with some resources, economically speaking. So, uh, yes, I think that uh, between women, we can have some links of solidarity so that we can work in the field that we like. I can say that this my jo my job, my my work with community radio or with women um, is the most important thing 
to think I could do in my life. I like, uh, I like it is very much. So I consider myself fortunate so to, to work in the field I like. And the, the, the money, of course, is important and it has been important, but um, I found a way to to live uh, from the thing that I like to do. <laughs> so you said that you spent about uh, 20 years to develop that feminist approach communication strategy. What strategy have you included to increase uh, women's participation in media? So my work in in a mark. Uh, oh, oh. I have to say that uh, my main organization is Salud Integral para, para la Mujer, this CIPAM, and CIPAM is a member of a mark. But then I was named uh, or elected the representative for women in a mark through this feminist organization, CIPAM. So uh, my participation in a mark was. Uh, particularly to 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 design some strategies to incentivize the participation of indigenous or not only indigenous but into indigenous women too uh, in in community radio so i i did some work um pushing women to participate but in the other hand pushing men to to understand that it is necessary the particip participation of of women in community radio because then we we can speak about uh, diversity we can speak about plurality if we win, if we include different sectors and of course the the point of view of women is very important for community radio so i i did some workshops or some conferences or some uh, strategies uh, to, to create, even to create some women's areas inside the community radio stations. Uh, um, I don't think that we, uh, that I could do a lot and that I, I had a big, big success on that. But I think that many things have changed, not because of me, of me only, of course, but because of the, the women, uh, we, we have, uh, 30, 40, 50, I, I don't know exactly uh, how many years pushing the changes in the society, but uh, in every space we are participating. So I think that change are changing. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, um, yes, <laughs> things are changing in, in community radio stations in Mexico at least, and I hope in Latin America and in Nepal. How difficult was it to make a men in decision-making level to convince them to understand uh, them to involve also women in decision-making level? You know, I think that uh, men will understand when we explained and we, uh, um, we claim for our right to participate. Uh, in Mexico, we have an uh, indigenous uh, radio station in Santa Maria Tlahuitol Tepec, Oaxaca, that is the state, a state in the south of Mexico, and there is uh, this this radio station belong to a uh, Mije community that is one of the um, indigenous people and in, peoples in Mexico. So th there in these radio stations, the, the, the women, young women who were uh, pa uh, participating there, they organized themselves inside the radio station and they started to, to, to explain to the, the men in the station and to, to not, not only explain, but uh, sometimes you need to be more uh, um, strong and fight 
for the right to participate. So they did that and they are very strong women there in this indigenous radio station. And so we we wanted to replay this this kind of a organization they did in the the radio station, uh, Santa Maria Tlahuitoltepec. The name is Hemboch, and we went to another uh, radio stations to try to organize. Um, but no, in every radio station we had this uh, success. So we can say that well, some men understood, but many others know uh, and we need to continue the work the our uh, fight <laughs> to to do some changes in science yes but um i we did for instance we did some gender workshops for the whole network uh participated women and men because sometimes we work only with women and that is important and that is necessary because women also need to understand first their place and their right but but then after the women are already um clear about the rights so we need to go to the men in the network and explain why we are claiming for our rights. Maru, we have uh, come almost at the end of the show. I would like to request you to give one line message to the world sisters or a call for them to get engaged in the media. I, I can say to indigenous women that they have the right and they, they arise the bo their voices we every woman have the right to arise her voice thank you so much mrs maru uh, Chavez, for your valuable time and esteemed thoughts you shared with me thank you you're welcome uh today i have discussed with mrs uh, maru Chavez about the women's participations in the media especially their struggles and the challenges I have come to the end of the show. If you have any queries or feedbacks in regards to this weekly television show, you can reach me at uh, indigenoustelevision at gmail.com. Next week, I will come up with a new guest to discuss new issues or new challenges. Uh, till then, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>